بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله ثم الصلاة والسلام على البشير النذير والسراج المنير العبد المعيد والرسول المصدد أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Before I start my lecture tonight because tonight is the night of the anniversary of birthday the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and <clears throat> Imam Ja'farun al-Sadiq alayhi salam I congratulate it to all brothers and sisters and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this chance and tawfiq to be among the real followers of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhi uh, salam we can talk about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Imam Ja'farun al-Sadiq alayhi salam about these great outstanding figures of Islam, these great role models from different aspects. Tonight, I am about to talk about a little bit about the one of the characteristics of the Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In Surah Ar-Rahman, there are verses that our oh, brothers and sisters are familiar with these verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَرَجَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ يَلْتَقِيَانِ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخٌ لَا يَبْقِيَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala flowed two rivers, two seas, two oceans and they race to each other but there is a barrier between these two and they don't mix into each other they don't transgress each other they are separated from each other Apparently, it is speaking about the one of the scientific miracles that is mentioned in the Quran, and it is one of the features of the seas, that two oceans, two seas, one with different you know, types of water when they reach to each other. They don't mix into each other. And there's a kind of barrier because of the self difference in, in the surface tension that is there. They don't mix into each other. They don't melt into each other. And this is one of the scientific miracles of Quran. I don't want to talk about this. There is a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam which is mentioned in different books like uh, Tafsir uh, Furat Kufi or Tafsir Qummi or Tafsir Al-Burhan Al-Burhan fi Tafsir Al-Quran and also in other books it has been mentioned from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam that the inner meaning of these Bahrain, these two seas, is Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Alayha and Imam Amirul Mu'mineen Alayhi Salam. These are the two seas. And the barrier between these two is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. What does it mean? It means that these two great oceans, these two great seas, Imam Ali and Lady Fatima al-Zahra salamullah alayha, they are living together. And they don't transgress each other's rights. They don't do any kind of injustice or oppression against each other. Why? There is a barrier between these two and this barrier, it doesn't let them to do injustice to each other. As long as the barrier is there, as long as the barrier stands there, there is justice there. And there is no oppression, there is no injustice. No one ranks the other. Why? Because there is a barrier and according to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam that barrier is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, according to this inner aspect of these verses and according to that point that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam is teaching us, if we want to be like this, 
If you want not to have any injustice in your life, you have to have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wasallam as the barrier between yourself and other things. You know, in this life, in this world, we have two types of barriers. One type of barrier is the barrier of light and the other is darkness. For example, these walls of this building, these are barriers of darkness. These are barzakh of darkness. Means, as long as this wall is there, you cannot see what is behind this wall. So it's a kind of darkness. As long as the door is closed, as long as the curtain is there, as long as the wall is there, you cannot see the other side. And according to the other side, there is darkness for you here. This is one type of barrier. This is one type of barzakh. And the other type of barzakh is the barrier of light. You know, according to scientists, there is a barrier of light between you and any object that you observe. If there is no light as barrier, you cannot see anything. There must be light. And according to this light, you will be able to see different objects. So there must be a barrier of light between your eyes and the objects that you want to observe, you want to see. This is another type of barrier. So this is not darkness, this is light in itself. And it gives light to other things. And the Prophet وسلم, is this kind of light, he himself, and he is the barrier of light. And according to him, and because of him, we can put and we can shed light on other things to observe other things in a divine manner and in a divine day. As long as the Prophet is there, there is no oppression, there is no injustice, there is no doing wrong actions. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, he himself is the manifestation of justice. You know, the concept of justice is very important in Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the mission for all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to establish justice. In Surah Al-Hadid, verse 25, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ We sent our messengers by very strong proofs. وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ بَالْمِيزَانِ and we revealed with them book, the book, and the measurement of truth. For what? For the reason that people establish justice among them. You know, the fact is that the prophets, they are not responsible to establish justice among people. They are responsible to give the book and the light the revelation to people then according to this light and according to the revelation which is there and it comes by the prophets and they are the role model then people can establish justice among themselves so people have to do that you know we wait for Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam the promised one and now Imam is in a cultation why because the time is not the time of Imam. Because people are not ready. Because people cannot stand justice. Because people cannot establish justice themselves. They have to be uprooted in a way. <coughs> they are so... <coughs> they are of great... And that level of maturity. And they are mature enough. And they are able to bear and to tolerate the difficulty and bitterness of justice at that time imam will appear and reappear and that is the what that imam will do and makes all the prophets happy and that is what all prophets came for that to make people and to help them to be of that level to be able to establish justice people themselves so you see how important justice is 
And the Prophet وسلم, he himself is the manifestation of justice. The Prophet, whatever he says, whatever he, act, he has as his actions and conducts, his behavior, everything is according to justice. There is no tiny spot of injustice or oppression in his sayings, in his behaviors. And he is pure light. So as long as he is the barrier of light between you and other things, you will not do mis in fact injustice, injustice and no oppression. La yabghiyan, Quran says. Then you won't transgress others' right. You don't go beyond justice. You establish justice, then the Prophet is the barrier of light between you and every other thing and every other people. As long as the Prophet is the barrier. And the Prophet, as I said, he is the manifestation of justice himself. And this is one of the great miracles of the Prophet. You know, sometimes people think that Quran is the great miracle, which is a very great miracle which is a very great miracle and the other miracles of the Prophet but one of the greatest miracles in the Prophet وسلم, is the attributes of the prophets you know these moral traits of character or makaram al akhlaq what he called himself noble traits of character that he has in himself in the place that he is living it's a miracle itself he was living at the time of ignorance. And this ignorance is not about just lackage of knowledge about things, about the world, but it is about behaving irrationally. He is upward in such a circumstance, in such atmosphere, in such an atmosphere that people, they didn't care about justice. The most important virtue for people of the time of the Prophet the place that he was living in and he was uproot in was their tribe. Because without the tribe, people couldn't continue their lives. <coughs> if a person was out of a tribe, the least thing that could happen to him was that he or she was taken as a slave by other tribes. So to continue your, your life, you needed, the person needed to be in the tribe and to be accepted by the tribe. So tribe and the virtues of the tribe was the most important values for those people. There was a famous saying of Arabs at that time, they used to say on Surah Akhaq, Zaliman aw madluma. You have to support your brother, means a person from your tribe, no matter the person is oppressor or oppression. Why? Because anything greater than other things that you can find in the world is your tribe. And to support a person from your tribe. In such atmosphere, a prophet comes, a person comes, and his message is that calling people and saying, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kunu qawwamina lillah. Oh you who believe. Raised for the sake of Allah. Shuhada abil ghist. And bear witness for justice. Wala yajramannakum shana'anu qawman ala Allah tabilu. If you hate some people, the hatred of your towards people shouldn't make you to be unjust to them and to behave unjustly. Be just people, observe justice, and this is closer to taqwa, to piety. And as you know, the greatest virtue in Islam is taqwa in akramakum in dallahi atqakum. And you, if you want to achieve taqwa, the greatest and the most closest way to taqwa is to to observe justice and to practice justice. You see, the Prophet is saying that you have to practice justice. 
Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'malun. Allah knows about what you are, whatever you are doing. In other verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you have to practice ta- justice, even though it is against your own desires, or the desires and benefits of your fathers and your parents and your family and your relatives. Justice is the most important concept. A prophet comes at a time that people used to live in ignorance and there was no such value for them and it's a miracle in itself. And that's because of the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought up the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Amir al-Mu'maneen alayhi salam says about in khutbat al ghas uh, one of the sermons of Nahjul Balagha, Imam says there, لَقَدْ قَرَنَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مِنْ لَدٌ أَنْ كَانَ فَتِيمًا أَعْزَمْ مَلَكٍ مِنْ مَلَائِكَتِهِ From the very childhood of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the greatest angel to be with the Prophet يَسْلُكُ بِهِ تَرِيقَ الْمَكَارِمْ وَمَحَاسَنَ أَخْلَاقِ الْعَالَمْ لَيْلَهُ وَنَهَارَ To teach the Prophet, not to teach the Prophet, to take the hand of the Prophet and to accompany him in the way of makaram al-akhlaq, noble traits of characters and showed and taught the Prophet the good moral traits of character in the world, the nights and the days. 24 hours the angel, the greatest angel was with the Prophet. Unfortunately, there is a hadith which is narrated from one of the wives of the Prophet وسلم, in the books of Brothers of Sunnah that uh, when the first time Gabriel, Jibreel revealed to the Prophet and brought the Quran, the Prophet was so afraid and he came home while he was you know, very frightened and he thought that he has uh, seen some kind of devil. And when he came home and he was in the middle of nowhere and he was very confused, then he talked about what he observed to his wife Khadija Salamullah alayha and Khadija told her do not be afraid you are a prophet and that was an angel that was Gabriel how can it be true how can the prophet be afraid of Gabriel while from his very <coughs> from his very childhood according to Imam Ali alayhi salam Imam says from his, the Prophet from his very childhood was with the greatest angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A'zamu malakin min malaikatih The greatest angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with the Prophet. The Prophet was in contact with angels. It was not his first time to see the angel to be afraid. He was uproot with his angels and the angel told the Prophet Makarim al noble traits of character which is higher than only good moral traits. And justice is one of them. Justice in any circumstances. Sometimes you want to establish justice and there is no harm to you. It's not that difficult. Sometimes you want to establish justice and you lose some, something. It's difficult. And sometimes it becomes more difficult. You want to be kind and just to those people who have betrayed you, who have been bad to you. And still, you have to observe justice if you are a pious person. As Quran says, لا يجرمنكم شنعان قوم على الله تأذل يعلدوا This is justice, the great characteristic which has which the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam he has embodied in his in himself and that's why as I recited the hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam <coughs> the Prophet he becomes the barrier of light himself if you want to not be if you don't want to be a, in, an unjust person if you don't want to do any oppression you have to have the Prophet as the barrier between you and any other thing and any other person. And this is justice. And this is the Prophet who is the role model of justice. 
and the example and manifestation of justice. If you want to behave your children, your wife, treat them, your co-workers, I don't know, your neighbors, even your animals, the plants, the world, the universe, everything in a just way. Look at the prophet, have him as your role model, then whatever you do, it will be according to justice and it will be based on justice. There is a very nice hadith from Imam Ali alayhi salam that late Shaykh uh, Allama Majlisi has been mentioned, has mentioned this hadith in the book Bahar al-Anbar, volume 16, page 69. There he says, uh, in fact, it, hadith is from Amir al-Mu'manin alayhi salam that he says, فَذَكَرَ Aliyun. Imam Ali alayhi salam mentions the hadith that he found in one of the, on the sword of the Prophet, في قائمة سيف من سيوف رسول الله صحيفة. There is a writing on one of the swords of the Prophet, Prophet's swords, and there is written that there are three words. فيها ثلاثة حرف. There are three words there. سلم قطعك. Visit those who have abandoned you from the relatives. Sometimes it happens that for some causes, your relatives may abandon you, not come to you. It is not important to go and visit those who are good to you, but if you want to be a just person according to Quran and to have the makaram al akhraq those noble traits of character that <coughs> the Prophet came to accomplish them, is to be, is to visit those who have abandoned you. Tell the truth, even though it is against your own desires. And it is very interesting that these sayings are written on the sword of the Prophet. You know, people use the sword in the battlefield when you are fighting your enemy and they have attacked you, they have killed your brothers, your companions, your beloved ones, and you are angry. At the moment you have taken out your sword, you want to kill the person. At that time, you have to observe justice. You have to put out any personal issue. You know, it's very difficult. It is very difficult. In that circumstances, you see on the sword, it is written, قُلِ الْحَقَّ وَلَوْ عَلَى نفسك. And then Imam said, the, th the third point on the sword of the Prophet was, <coughs> Be good and treat well those people who have been bad to you, those people who have betrayed you, those people who behaved you unjustly. Do not say it's a matter of tit for tat. No. Makaram al akhlaq is to behave well and in a good way those people who have been bad to you and the prophet he himself is the manifestation of these great characteristics he has been uproot by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has this great personality and you want to have him as your role model then you will be among the followers of the prophet when quran says there is a great and a good role model in the Prophet for you. It is in all these aspects of life. It is not only for prayers, it's not only for fasting, for performing, I don't know, Hajj. The Prophet is a role model in all these aspects. And Quran says, the day of judgment is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we will call all people by their imams and the imam is the one that you look like him, you resemble him. Now there is a hadith that says on the day of judgment all of you, you will, will be called Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. As you know, Quran says there is no blood relationship. <coughs> on the day of judgment. And for believers, their identification and their identity card <coughs> is Muhammad.
How come? <coughs> Imagine <coughs> if you want to call all people human in this world. You call everyone as man, so there is no way to distinguish people. There must be some individual features, then you can find out whom you're talking about. How come that on the Day of Judgment, all believers, their names is Muhammad? The fact is that on that day, the names are not like the names here. There, your name is your characteristics, the actions that you have done in this life, they become, they embody themselves as the features, apparent kind of features, and it is shown on your face, on people's face. Quran says, Yawma yu'raful mujrimuna bisimahum, that day, on that day, the wrongdoers, the sinners, they can be distinguished according to their faces. You do not need to read their record. Everyone can easily find out what kind of a person he or she is because of the manifestation of their characteristics in their faces and in their appearance. And if you want to be among the people their Imam is the Prophet of Islam. Their, pro their Imams are Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. We have to, in fact, embody these characteristics of the Prophet in ourselves. To be just the way that they were just. As the Quran says, ليس البر Goodness is not أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب Just to look to the east or west to find the direction of Qibla. وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ is to believe in God and the angels and the books and the prophets and to, to perform Salat and to perform Hajj and to, I don't know, to do your fasting and to keep up with your promises after doing all these characteristics that is mentioned then Quran says these are the truthful ones. These truthful ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The day of judgment is the day that your truthfulness will work for you. And people can and will benefit from their truthfulness. This truthfulness on the day of judgment, it is not only about telling the truth. It's about being manifestation of truth in your behavior and in your actions in following the role models, the divine role models and the do's and don'ts of the prophet and the prophets without any deficiency and in a perfect manner. We are out of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us to be among the real followers of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and to be able to be among those people who have embodied these great characteristics and noble moral traits of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in themselves and to be in their party on the Day of Judgment. Allahumma aghfir lil mu'mineena wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahiyya'i minhum wal anbat wa tabi' baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat afdir salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.